Dollars or a dollar. Dollar, 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 dollar. Hey, this is Timmy G. Welcome to the fourth edition of my tutorial series on DJ Pro 2 for Mac by Algorithm. Today's tutorial will be about all of the different track loading settings in DJ Pro 2. Let's get started. So I've reset the DJ Pro 2 settings to be just like um, the way that it is when you just install the software. So um, let's try to load a track. So to load a track, we know from a previous tutorial that all you have to do is click the track and then drag it onto one of the decks. But right away, I see that the track is starting to play, even though I didn't push play. So in order to stop that, if you want to stop that, you go up to DJ Pro, click Preferences, and then under the General tab, you look under Song Loading, and this first uh, thing that is checked off, it says Automatically Start Playing Song. I don't want it to automatically start playing song. If you want it to, then great, you can keep it on. That That's how it would be like if you're using a turntable with vinyl. Um, but I, I don't want that, so I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to load the track again. And we see that the track is not playing. And I can start it whenever I want to. Okay, let's go back to the preferences and look at another option. The next option says automatically jump to start point. Now, you can set a start point or I, I've been calling it a temporary cue point using these buttons, this set button. So I've already set a temporary cue point right here in the song. I'll move this menu. So right here, this is my temporary cue point. Um, but I'm going to move it away for now. And then I'm going to move this back and I'm going to select automatically jump to start point. And now I'm going to reload this track. Now right away it starts on this uh, cue point. So if I wanted to do that instead of starting it at the beginning, I could do that. Um, now if you are wondering what happens when both automatically start playing the song and jump to the start point do when they're both on, uh, let's try it. So I'm going to drag it again. And it starts playing from the cue point, which is no surprise. The next setting is Reset EQ Effects and Controls. So if I mess with the EQs or the control, let's say the gain, and maybe the uh, tempo slider, when Reset EQ is on, I'm going to reload the track. And then it all resets. If it were off, let's see what happens. I'll mess with these settings again. When these are off, I'll go to preferences, turn it off, and then I'll reload. I'll, I'll load a different track. And we see that these effects still stay on. Now this changed because I have auto gain on. I'll talk about auto gain in the limiter in another tutorial. But everything else stayed the same. But I personally prefer having it um, reset every time I load a new track. So I'm going to go back and turn it back on. and we see that it's all back to normal. And the last thing that we saw in the Preferences tab for song loading is Auto Sync BPM. If you want the track to automatically sync to whatever track you're playing, you can select that. So I'll select that right now to show. And let's see, I'll pick the fight. It's close enough in tempo. So when I drag this onto the other deck, this the regular BPM is 174, but it automatically syncs to the same tempo as the song that I'm playing right now, 160. So if you want that, great. I personally don't want that. Um, so I'm going to turn it off. The next thing that we see down here is deck protection. And this is actually a really cool feature, especially if you're just getting started out and accidentally drag a track onto the uh, a deck that's playing. So if you turn this on, prevent song loading on active deck, that means that if a track is playing, so I'll play pennies or a dollar, and then I'll try to add a new track to that. I'll, I'll try to add I Got No Love. And you get this message, the active, de active deck protection enabled. So basically, it will not let you play a song if, um, if the fader is open and the song is playing. So in order to change it, I need to stop this song, or I can have the crossfader go over here, either way and then I'll drag the track on, and then I can add the new track. 
If I do not have deck protection mode enabled, let's see what happens. So I'll turn it off. And I'll be playing I Got No Love. And then say, oh, I want to add pennies or a dollar. It just stops playing. So this is something that you do not want to have happen at a gig for obvious reasons. You don't want a song that's playing, um, that's halfway done playing, to just stop out of nowhere and have no other track playing. Uh, so yeah, so that's why that's a good mode. So I prefer that to be on. Now, if we look down, we see the play pause time. You can uh, take up to five seconds to start and stop your tracks. So I prefer it to, to just be off, but if you want to hear what it sounds like, I'll show you. So we'll go up to five seconds for both of them, and it's just kind of like the break, uh, start, stop noise that uh, a, a record would play on vinyl. So let's see what it is when I hit play. So it basically takes five seconds for the track to get playing at full speed. And then when I stop the track, it takes five seconds to stop. And you can choose how long you want it to uh, start, start and stop. But like I said, I prefer um, not really using this and just going at, setting it down to zero. If we go down here for tempo, uh, the slider range, um, you can pick anywhere from 6% to 75%. I prefer 10% most of the time just because you can get an accurate beat match and matching the BPM. This invert slider button, um, I'll show you what it does. Uh, if, if I do not have it on and I play my track and I want to change the tempo, I, can, I would slide it up to increase the tempo and down to decrease the tempo. But if you have invert slider, it makes down increase the tempo and up decrease the tempo um, the reason they have this is a lot of DJ controllers including um, I believe all of Pioneer's DJ controllers are configured like this so I actually use the invert slider all the time because that's what I'm used to um, but you can do whatever one is to your DJ controller and if you don't use a DJ controller you can do whatever you prefer you can also edit the tempo slider settings underneath the tempo fader. So if I close out of this and click right here and go to tempo, then you can pick the range and you can decide whether or not to invert slider. Now, if you do it on one deck, it will do it for all the decks. So if I turn invert slider off and change this to 75 and I check this deck, it'll be at 75 and the invert slider will be off. So it's you can't do it per deck, it's just for the whole software. So I'm gonna turn it back 10%. So yeah, that's about it. If you liked this video or if it helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or video suggestions, be sure to leave a comment. If you want to see more content like this and check out my original music and DJ performances, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.